Hey everyone, Howard Gearhauser here with my dad, Dr. Richard Gearhauser. In today's video, we actually wanted to answer a question that we've been getting quite a bit um, relating to our videos on sun exposure. So a big concern and a question that we're getting is, doesn't the sun create more melanomas or deadly skin cancers? And that's a valid question. I know that there's a lot of fear out there around skin cancer and having to have skin cancer removed and things like that. So we wanted to talk about it with you guys today. So dad, what are your thoughts on sun exposure as it relates to skin cancer like melanomas? Well, when I was in medical school and in my training and in my practice, uh, we were taught that you know, melanomas, uh, which are by far the most deadly skin cancers, so the squamous cell cancers and the basal cell cancers uh, don't aren't aren't deadly very often. I mean, they do kill some people, but it's a, a very low number. But the melanomas, uh, because they can metastasize, um, kill a higher number. So even though they're the least common skin cancer, they have the highest mortality rates. And we were told in my training and in practice that one of the risk factors is sun exposure for melanomas. And, uh, and they would always qualify that saying, well, it's a burn, especially a burn that you had when you're young. Um, and there were studies that showed that. You do a questionnaire, you know, thinking back, did I ever get a bad sunburn? Well, you know, and then they correlate that to people that say they have it, remember a bad sunburn, are they more likely to get melanoma? You know, not a very powerful study. It's not like a prospective study. Uh, so not very powerful evidence. And there's been more evidence coming up recently and, and it's kind of cast doubt on that scenario. And then we know that outdoor workers tend to have less melanomas than office workers. So that kind of goes against uh, that paradigm, although they say that, oh, well, office workers more easily get burnt. You know, could be true. And could be that's why office workers get more melanomas because they get burned easier um, because they're not in the sun on a regular basis. But there's been some studies correlating sun exposure to melanoma that just came out recently. And they, they were done in many different countries around the world. And the conclusion of this big study just recently within the past couple of years is that nowhere on the planet is there a correlation with increasing sun exposure and more melanoma in any type of skin anywhere on the planet. So when they look at different areas and, and do the math of the statistics, there's no correlation. So I don't think we can say melanomas are caused by the sun when nowhere in the world, no skin type, very light skin, very dark skin, no skin type, is there association between melanoma uh, and how much time you spend in the sun. So that goes against melanomas being caused by the sun. And then there's like the Swedish study that we talk about a lot. In Sweden, you know, they have socialized medicine, so it's easier to have captured your population. And so it's easier to do a prospective study over many years. You can't do that in the United States without it costing tons of money. But in Sweden, where there's socialized medicine, you have all the data, that's relatively easier to do. So what they did is they looked at women over 20 years and they interviewed them and there was women that sunbathed a lot and women that, you know, at the extremes, women that sunbathed a lot and women that hid, hid from the sun. And so the bottom line was women that hid from the sun were more likely to die of melanoma than women who sunbathed on a regular basis. In fact, the, the women that hid from the sun, that effect was so powerful that 
Hiding from the Sun for those women, 30,000 women. So a big study over many years, very well done study that you're not able to do a study like that in the United States because of our medical system being so fragmented. But here, these women, hiding from the sun was the equivalent risk of like smoking a couple packs of cigarettes a day. So we know smoking cigarettes um, shortens your life. You know, lung cancer, emphysema, other lung diseases caused by smoking. So we know that, well, that, you know, mathematical percentage of life you give up smoking is the same as those women who hide from the sun. They give up the same amount of time of their life from hiding from the sun. So the other issue is the, the treatable skin cancers, the basal cell carcinomas and the squamous cell carcinomas. So these cancers, and you know, yeah, it can be a drag to have to get a section of your face cut off um, or part of your nose cut off of one of our commenters, you know, is asking, well, how, you know, I, I know people have that get their nose whacked off or half their nose whacked off. And so, you know, our modern world has so many exposures that make us more vulnerable to cancer. I don't think singling out that the sun is what caused someone to get that skin cancer on their, wherever they get it. Yes, they come on the face a lot, which is exposed to the sun more. And it could be that sun exposure in combination with us doing the other things wrong. Because I, I think if you look back to kind of more, uh, hunter gatherers, those types of people, they don't, do not get skin cancer. Okay, you might say, well, it's because they don't live to be 32. That's not true. Hunter-gatherers live to be old. The average lifespan might be 32 because living out in the jungle is very risky. Your baby's likely to die. That cuts the life expectancy way down. You're more likely to die if you get a bacterial infection, no antibiotics, get a serious injury, you know, you're going to get an infection and die or there's no surgeons to fix you. So yeah, life expectancy was very low, but it didn't mean that people didn't live to be 60, 70, 80. It just meant that the average age was 32, but it didn't mean everybody the day they turned 32, they killed over and died. It just means that that was the average age, figuring in infant mortality and all that. So the old people, hunter-gatherers, didn't get skin cancer and they were in the sun all the time. So that gets back to, we isolate from nature. What does nature do in a temperate climate where the fair skin people are that get more skin cancer, the fair people? Well, the sun is weak in February, gets a little bit stronger in March, significantly stronger in April, kind of strong in May, really strong in June it gradually comes on. So our skin adapts and we know those adaptations. Uh, we call it developing a sun callus but it has to do with tanning, which is the melanin deposition. It has to do with a thickening of the skin and it has to do with augmenting the little mechanisms inside our cells that fix the, the DNA when it's damaged by ultraviolet light. So I would say that chances are even the garden variety skin cancers that come out on the sun exposed places. So we blame the sun. I would say if we followed mother nature's rules and kept our sun exposure, started it when the sun was weaker and kept it up. And then by the time the June 21st, the strongest sun day of the year on the Northern hemisphere, that day you're ready for it. And it's, it's not gonna hurt you. And you can be out in that yeah, you don't want to burn yourself. And yes, if you're very fair skinned, you're probably not going to be want to be in the sun during the window of where it's most intense, like between 10 and 2, uh, if you're very fair skinned. Obviously, you don't want to burn. And some people uh, ha are very sensitive to sun, but most people will get a tan. And if you get a tan, that's good. That's your skin 
protecting itself from the UV, but it's also your skin actually absorbing more energy from the sun because we know melanin splits water the same way that a plant does in photosynthesis. Uh, we don't know exactly how much energy that gives us, uh, but it, it's a source of energy. Uh, it's a theory, theoretical source of energy. Makes sense. Yeah, so to kind of recap the response there, skin cancer, you know, has been found, like melanomas have been found more in indoor workers than outdoor workers, but it's important that you don't let your skin burn if you're someone who's been living the indoor lifestyle make sure that you gradually increase your sun exposure, you know, incrementally, you know, start with maybe 15 minutes the first day and then work your way up from there, build that sun callus so you don't get burnt. And then your likelihood of getting different types of skin cancer probably goes down if you're avoiding getting burnt. But again, the people who stay inside tend to get the more serious forms of the skin cancer. So, it looks like getting outside is probably a pretty good idea and reconnecting with nature as we always talk about is really our prime concept. The more connected and harmonious we are with nature, the better off our health will be across the board. Is there anything you wanted to add to that before we sign off? Yeah, I would say the, the period of acclimatizing, developing that sun cost is, is about six weeks. So you would, you know, over six weeks gradually increase exposure um, and I think you know just being a common sense you know if if you're not burning and you're feeling good you know st stay out you can stay out longer and longer and longer I go out uh, I'm in Arizona I can be out you know seven hours on a hike with my shirt off and I, I don't get burnt and I don't wear sunscreen and I don't wear sunglasses um, Maybe not everyone's going to be able to do that amount of time, but I'm definitely fair skinned, definitely from a climate, Northern Europe. I've done my genetic ancestry, so I know my ancestors didn't get a ton of sun, but now that I'm old and now that my cells need more energy than when I was younger, the sun's become more important, so I spend more time out in it. Now, might I get a few more wrinkles? You know, to me, that's a vanity thing. And you know, yeah, I might get a few more wrinkles, but I'd rather have my health and, and uh, my, you know, vitality than to ha care about how, how I look on the video. Yeah, so keep asking questions in the comments. We definitely go through them and the ones that we get most frequently. We'll do videos like this. You know, we've committed to our one video per day and are definitely looking for more ideas. So let us know what, what type of stuff you want us to create. We're more than happy to do that. Uh, thanks for the time, Dad, and we'll see you guys on the next video.